All right, the last few videos have been way too dry. Volatility risk premiums, monetizing retail driven options, volatility dislocation. Ah, the financial jargon. I, I can't, I can't even. I've been doing a lot of introspective thinking recently, and I've realized that I'm starting to forget what investing is all about. Investing isn't supposed to be a pragmatic, well thought out, risk averse process. Investing is all about having fun, thrilling, risky trades, bright, colorful artwork. Getting jacked to the tits and way too much leverage. Starving. And coming together to donate our savings to people significantly wealthier than ourselves on Wall Street. Investing isn't about making money. It's about buying 10 monitors, then dedicating hours of your life to making schizophrenic connections between the Atlantic Salmon Futures market, mispricings of options on short-term volatility futures, in the name of Elon's eighth kid, all to generate one percentage point of alpha. Pre-tax. After taxes, you didn't beat the market. Motherfucker. Welcome to the global financial markets, where you can turn your money into more money with the push of a few buttons. Right now, you're a broke degenerate with $1,000 to his name. Your goal is to turn this $1,000 into 100000 where you can then, you know, have $100,000 and still probably not be satisfied in your cycle of perpetual and insatiable greed. It may come as a surprise to some of you that in the financial markets, turning your 1,000 into 100,000 isn't actually the hard part. It's incredibly simple. Good, so we can just uh, do that then? Not exactly. There are of course two things that are going to ruin this for you. Time. It takes time to turn your money into more money. Specifically, a long fucking time. Don't worry, there is one workaround. It's not good. Risk. Pick your poison. The longer you're willing to wait, the less risk you need to take. The more impatient you are, the riskier your strategy needs to become. Time and risk, they're always in perfect balance. You can 100x your money in a matter of days, but you have to take a lot of risk. You can also 100x your money risk-free, but it's gonna take time. What we need to find is the balance point between time and risk that makes it worthwhile to lock your money away in an investment. After all, what's the point of putting $1,000 in the market if it could be better spent somewhere else? Opportunity cost is a fucking buzzkill. Why can't I just gamble my money in Bitcoin without somebody telling me, oh yeah, that money is better invested in a college education. Education. I got all the college education I needed out of five four locos. Yeah, I'm studying anesthesiology. If we want to prove to these know-it-alls that gambling, investing, is a worthwhile use of our money, we have to answer a few questions. What is the return of $1,000 invested in yourself? How risky is it? Once we figure that out, we need to find out where we could invest $1,000 in the financial markets to beat that return while simultaneously taking less risk. I need to prove that investing is real, that this is an actual thing that makes sense to do. And yes, that is literally the only reason I'm making this video. Step one, what is the return of investing in yourself? College, a gym membership, Grant Cardone's $12,000 courses, it's all part of this idea of investing in yourself. This magical thing where you try to like, actually earn more money to make more money. Why would someone do that? I personally, I, I don't get it. I'd rather quite literally Venmo Wall Street money than pick up a copy of Rich Dad Poor Dad and start reading. But there are some people that think this, this is the path to wealth. Mostly the people selling you this garbage. Let's try to prove them wrong. If we want to figure out the return of a dollar invested in ourselves, we have to figure out two things. How much money does the average person invest in themselves, and how much lifetime income does that actually translate to, if we discount it back to its present future value? Let's just start here. College. Probably the most expensive investment you'll ever make in yourself. Let's call it 60k on average for a bachelor's degree. How much excess lifetime income will that degree generate? We're also assuming college is the most efficient way to invest in yourself, which being that it comes with a lot of non-educational expenses, it's probably not, but because it's the most common way to do so, I think this will make sense with the largest number of people. So I got a lot of this information from some questionably biased sources, but after doing plenty of research, I deemed that this information is hopefully not biased enough for me to BS the rest of this video. Probably. The excess lifetime value of a bachelor's degree over a 40-year career turns out to be around $800,000. This means on average someone with a bachelor's degree will make a total of $800,000 more than a high school graduate. This is definitely on the higher side of all the numbers I read. Some argue it's closer to $400,000, but we're trying to beat the highest possible average return of investing in yourself, so overestimating isn't the end of the world. Now, some of these jobs are different. 
some are highly scalable, some are where you dance on a stage to make money. The comparison isn't exactly perfect, but I, I really BS this, guys. I'm not even gonna lie to you. $800,000 of excess lifetime income over a 40-year period means your $60,000 initial investment returns an inflation-adjusted 6.7% per year. But wait, this investment pays off in a more linear fashion. You get your money consistently throughout the 40-year lifespan. Any investment in the financial markets takes a while to pay off. It grows slowly at first, then quickly deep in the future. How do we compensate for the fact that $800,000 broken down evenly over 40 years is better than $800,000 that only pays out when I can't get hard anymore? Good question. I think they're actually kind of equal. Here's why. We have to consider the opportunity cost of the time spent working at some job you probably hate. So yes, this investment pays off in a more preferable manner, but you also have to dedicate thousands of hours of time to it. This runs mostly on autopilot. Would you rather starve or do something you hate? All things considered, I'm gonna say the negatives from each cancel one another out. This is all theoretical anyway. If you don't think they do, you can adjust your interest rate to compensate. For example, let's say I need an extra million when I'm 60 to be willing to starve now. Based on a $60,000 initial investment, you'd want to find a 9% return in the markets. Does that make sense? For now, I'm gonna stick with 6.7% because it's more convenient for the video. Call it an even 7 to account for the blatant errors I've undoubtedly made. Let's figure out how risky this return is. Now, from what I've read, these lifetime earnings tend to be anywhere from 40% lower on the lowest end to 100% higher on the highest end. However, as far as the actual probability distribution within this, I don't know how it breaks down. My viewers are far more intelligent than the average person usually. So we're just going to say this is very risk-free. All right, so at a 7% interest rate, $1,000 invested in yourself takes approximately 68 years to turn into 100k. That's our index. So we need to find a way to beat this return while simultaneously taking less risk by investing in the global financial markets. But first, a word from the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. Surfshark coming in to help your boy eat this month. Protecting your data is of course very important when doing anything finance related, especially for you guys who probably actually have money in your accounts. Surfshark uses uncrackable encryption to protect your data and masks your IP address so that no one knows where you're logging on from. Also, if you're like me and you've been using somebody else's Netflix account for the past year, you can use Surfshark to access all the European Netflix shows. If that doesn't make you feel like a Bond villain, I don't know what will. Surfshark is also the only VPN that allows you to use one account for any number of devices. Computer, phone, tablet, all of it. The great irony of this is I've actually been using Surfshark for the past year because I needed a VPN and saw a sponsored ad like this on YouTube. You can use the code BENJAMIN to get 83% off and 3 months free. Link in the description. They also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying it out. Ah, the U.S. Treasury. I even hate saying it. Treasury bills have a fixed interest rate, and at a whopping 2%, your $1,000 turns into $100,000 in roughly 233 years. And with an average inflation rate of 2%, this $100,000 in the year 2254 gives you the purchasing power of roughly $1,000. Congratulations. You played yourself. Okay, but that rate is bound to go up in the future, right? No one is buying these right now. Maybe it's more fair to go off the historic average treasury return. Okay, so at an average 6% return, your money earns 4% annually adjusted for inflation. Not terrible. Assuming you have a goddamn cryogenic freezer that allows you to sleep until these actually print in 118 years. Yeah, not terrible. 118 years for $1,000 to turn into 100k. That being said, this is a risk-free investment. As risk-free as you're ever gonna get. Assuming no world-ending catastrophe, you are quite literally guaranteed to have your $100,000 at the end of this. Now, higher inflation might mean that 100k is worthless, but you are guaranteed to be paid the full interest in total. But we're definitely gonna need a higher interest rate to make this worthwhile. Alright, let's just get this over with. Uh, 7% return, inflation adjusted for the rest of your miserable life. Honestly, what, what even is life, really, without compulsively checking Robin Hood every two minutes? That's no life I want to live. Sleeping? Not interested. 
It takes 68 years for your 1,000 to turn into 100,000. This is, of course, banking on a lot of shaky assumptions, as well as our willpower to sit through multiple economic cycles, potentially world-ending catastrophes, and just about everything in between. Oh, just leave your money in an index fund. Yes, in theory. In reality, I'll tell you exactly what that looks like. You deciding you want to buy an index fund, but valuations are higher than they've ever been, so you decide to wait. After the market rallies another 30%, you realize that stocks will never go down, and decide to finally jump on the bull train. This is of course one week before everything crashes and you lose half your money in a day. Then things go sideways for a while and you think, fuck, this index thing probably doesn't work anymore. You decide to sell at a 50% loss. This is of course just one month before things start to pick up again. Now extend this perpetual cycle of fear and greed for 68 years. But for the sake of this video, we'll just assume the Virgin Fund gets you 7% inflation adjusted per year. The options market is where things get really interesting for your $1,000. And by interesting, I mean it's where you'll lose all of it the quickest. Everything, everything, fucking everything is priced efficiently by the options market. Yeah, but market returns are skewed to the upside. What about priced in? Oh yeah, but the volatility risk premium, I thought that priced in. What does that mean? It means that all of these complicated options strategies should generate the exact same return over the long term. Zero percent. That being said, the options market does give you two advantages. Kind of. Because options are priced based on a log normal distribution, we can determine an actual percentage chance of turning 1,000 into 100,000 in the options market. The other advantage of using options to gamble away your money is that time is no longer a factor. Because options are priced efficiently, turning your 1k into 100k in a week should be the same likelihood as doing it in two years. So how should you 100x your money in the options market? If you look at how options are priced in Robinhood, you can see that they pay out in a completely zero sum fashion. Let's say we go to sell a spread that's right at the money. We can see the expected value of the position. It's a 50-50 chance to double our money or lose everything. So how would you go about doing this if you were going to? Which you really never ever should do anything you see on this channel or YouTube. That is financial advice. Well, if you have a 50% chance to double your money, how many times do you need to double $1,000 to turn it into 100000 About seven times. What would be the best way to do this if you wanted to? You'd probably be best off selling seven weekly put credit spreads on stocks with high implied volatility. Puts tend to be overpriced relative to their call counterpart. This is because the market tends to pay a higher premium for downside protection, which means you have a slight temporary edge. That doesn't mean statistically the expected value of selling puts is higher than zero, which, now this is so fucking complicated, I'm just gonna explain it with memes. Stocks go up slowly over time then sometimes go down in a big way, very quickly. Because big spooky red line often happens way bigger than what the degenerates anticipate, puts are priced higher to compensate for this. So even though it might seem like there's an edge to selling downside protection to your uncle who's predicted 50 of the last two crashes, everything is of course, say it with me now, priced in. When selling puts, you don't actually have any statistical edge. But short term, this event is relatively unlikely, which means collecting the extra premium from selling puts makes more sense in this scenario. Okay, so all we need to do is double our money seven times. But wait, why not use leverage to buy more leverage? Assuming you actually want to do this, you've probably lost everything else in life. Why not use borrowed money as collateral for your puts? It literally can't go tits up. By maxing out your margin allowance with each trade, you can now 3x your money each time. For example, use your $1,000 to borrow $1,000, then sell $2,000 of at the money put credit spreads. You now have a 50% chance to make 200% on your initial investment. You also have a 50% chance to lose 200% on the position, but we're swinging for the fence here. Now it only takes six trades to turn your 1,000 into 243,000. What's the likelihood of winning six times when you have a 50% chance to win? About one in 64. Not great. Could you skew this likelihood more in your favor by researching the underlying and finding good opportunities to sell these spreads? Yes, possibly. But if you're using this strategy, you might want to brush up on your chart drawings because you're going to need a ton of confirmation bias to be able to sleep at night. This strategy gives you a 200% weekly return, definitely higher than investing in yourself. However, your risk is significantly larger. The Sharpe Ratio is a risk measure used to compare investments on a relative basis depending on their risk-adjusted return. In other words, what is the percentage return per one unit of risk? And if we just input all the variables here from our strategy, and okay, yeah. 
So we have three strategies to compare against our baseline. $1,000 invested in yourself takes approximately 71 years to turn into 100K, assuming a 7% annual return. This has some positives. Your money is paid out more evenly over the 71 year period. That means you probably won't starve in the short term, which is nice. However, it also takes a lot of your time and it's not scalable. You can only pump so much money into yourself before the return starts to diminish. Let's compare this against our other three options. First of all, the good things. They're all very scalable. You can put 100 in, 100,000, or 10 million, and it'll have no effect on how they return. Yeah, there's liquidity, but you'll be in the Bahamas on a yacht with millions of dollars before you need to worry about that. $1,000 in bonds takes anywhere from too long to way too long to get to 100,000. $1,000 in an index fund takes 68 years to turn into 100 at an average return of 7% per year. $1,000 in the options market takes three weeks to return negative 200%. In conclusion, a combination of all of these strategies makes the most sense. By combination, I mean not doing these three and only doing this one.